Hello and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to play day number eight for Six Masters tonight. It's the battle between David and Goliath, and then shortly after that will be what will hopefully be a war of attrition. Joining me tonight, the lovely Dev, James Stewart. Welcome, buddy. Yeah, good to be here, mate. And it's your second play day. I think we smashed it yesterday. It was good fun. Had some close games, had some washouts, bit of everything. And, uh, you know, we're past the halfway point in Six Masters now. So, yeah, let's get it cracking on. Yeah, exactly right. You mentioned that actually as we ended last night that we're past the halfway mark going into tonight. Of course, keeping up to date with the socials down below, you can give us your thoughts on how you think tonight's matches will go, getting included on that poll vote, which last night was extremely close for one of the matches. The other one didn't quite come true, but uh, I think everyone got the second series right. Yeah, um, I think I got that one right as well. I think I predicted the draw. You did. It's funny, I've heard a lot of the players um expressing that because of this map video system we only get that one ban and then there's that pick it really does make it a bit more likely you're gonna have those draws because teams um only get to ban out that one map so what's really great about that is we get to see some really close games yeah let's go have a look at the standings because we are at the halfway mark now and it gives everyone an idea as to how all eight teams are tracking by this point in the season Obviously, tonight we do have first versus eight dev, and well, that usually is never a fun match, but I, I do feel like Kanga, you know, Spruce had some fighting words. I, I do feel like maybe they can try and have a bit of fun tonight, maybe let loose a little bit, and the shackles are free. Yeah, well, Spruce is always a bit of a character, so it's great to see him playing and in the interviews. But I just want to point out, last season, Kanga, when they joined Pro League for the very first time, the only points they got throughout the entire season was by beating Wildcard. So who knows? It's a rematch. Maybe we're, it's going to happen again. If there's any chance for Kanga to make a statement and get off that donut down the bottom, now's the chance. Yeah, I certainly agree. And I mean, our second matchup tonight, Akami and Sinister, four and six, couldn't really be any closer there. Big opportunity for Sinister to keep in that race for top four. We, we, we really touched on it last night, that top four heating up as we continue to have a look at our schedules for tonight. We touched on Kanga versus Wildcard. It is going to be that David versus Goliath, though, I think, at the end of the day, Dev. Yeah, and Sinister Akami, which is the one later tonight. Akami, previously known under the alias TBD. They've got that branding now. You might have seen from NA Challenger League in the past. They still are looking for an org. You can see LFO in the name. But both them, Akami and Sinister, have really been vying to break into those top spots. And they're currently tied for points. So this is an opportunity for one of them to dance ahead and really get up there with Elevate and Wildcard, who are sitting in those top two spots. Of course, though, Kanga Esports versus Wildcard Gaming up first. That's the matchup we're going to be really focusing on here now as we move forward. And it's we don't want to beat around the bush here. Kanga's had a tough season, and unfortunately, it has gotten progressively worse as it's gone on to a point where the rot has to stop for Kanga Esports. They need to start turning things around. Last week, 2-7, 2-7 against Knights. I mean, I'm not calling a 7-0, 7-0 here, but the, the only way is... but up for Kanga. Yeah, oh, that's that's a great point. You know, when you've just had four or six losses so far in six Masters, you can only get better from that. And remember that Kanga had actually a, a decent performance last season in the Pro League. As I mentioned, they beat Wildcard. They had some close games, but then they lost two of their players to two really strong teams. They lost Worthy, who went and joined Elevate, a top two team. And they also lost um, Pat, who was previously under th uh, the name Thumbnail, over to Wildcard. So this team has definitely been a foster point for really up-and-coming talent. And we'll go ahead and have a look at Wildcard, who currently are leading the standings. They are the team to sort of catch right now for everyone. What was interesting was last week was the first week that they dropped a map. They dropped it to Alifo. And of course, we had Alifo last night. We were talking about you know, their performance and the expectations that they've now brought on themselves. Wildcard was a big scalp for them. So in essence, this is the first week now for Wildcard that they've got to kind of bounce back a little bit here. Yeah, they did get that first loss and it was LFO. So we've seen upsets go up against Wildcard before. They've also been pushed really close in 8-7. It took them to take on Ferox and some close games against Sinister as well. These guys... They've, they've, their name is out there. They've been to so many global events now, and a really disappointing performance met them at the Six Invitational. That's when they came back home. They picked up Pat, who was from Kanga. They picked up Gio, who was from Elevate. 
And this new roster with these guys is looking really, really good. And I think that they're on the up. They just have to prove it here. They're currently tied for points with Elevate, but these guys now get the chance to really run away with an extra six points after tonight. And obviously Wildcard, at the end of the day, cannot come into this series against Kanga thinking it's going to be a sure thing. They've still got to perform. Funny things can happen. You know, we saw Ferox actually last night come out of the gate on console at 6-1, shocking Elevate. I'm not saying Kanga's going to do the same thing here, Dev, but if you're not bringing your A game at this level of competition, despite Kanga's season thus far, they could come out and surprise Wildcard if they don't play their best. Yeah, and... Uh... It's been a really exciting season, as you mentioned. A lot of upsets. We've seen some crazy things. Like yesterday, how many? So many attacker rounds on consulate. It was just nuts. So, who knows? Even if Wildcard is the clear favor here, there's no doubt that we're in for a treat. Especially if Ethan starts popping off like he did a few weeks back against Sinister. We're gonna have a look at the map vetoes. One thing that from the research I've done is that Border is very much not liked from either <laughs> of these two teams. Although we did see it last night. I would be surprised if we see it tonight. Wildcard is like border who? What's that? They, they only have a six map pool on the, and in their brain. They've banned it like consistently forever. So I very much doubt we'll see border. Wildcard's probably going to ban that. Uh, for Kanga, it's really tough. There goes the border ban. For, uh, for Kanga, they're going to get rid of Consulate, a good map, very strong map for Wildcard. They were pushed to the limits against Ferox and only just came away with that 8-7. But on the flip side, Kanga have three losses on that map in recent times, including getting smacked around by Elevate 7-2. So I think mm. Kanga just, they, they see his strong ground for Wildcard, not so strong ground for us. We'll get rid of that one. I mean, the beauty of home broadcast is you can have all the information right in front of you at the go here. That is the... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm currently casting with a statue. What's happening, Xenox? This is this is a bit of a sad moment. Oh, well, F's in chat for Feral, uh, for Xenox, please. I'll just continue this because, let's be honest, I knew what I was talking about better than him anyway. Um, so we're talking about Consulate and Border being banned out by these guys. Picks. Hmm. Wildcard have left in Theme Park consistently every single week they haven't banned it they also haven't picked it but they've played it twice wouldn't be surprised to see kanga try and whip that out no info from them on that one yet let's have a look at these picks theme park whoa i guess i know what i'm talking about or something uh bit of a gamble there for kanga they've already there's two teams so far it's been what lfo and sinister both had uh verse wildcard and let it slip through the ban phase and then picked it and then lost it to wildcard so a bit of a gamble here but hey why not you got vods on how wildcard play it i like the uh the attitude here wildcard gonna pick coastline and mac they haven't played in two months and since then it was uh two losses they had actually one against Fnatic 7-4 in pro league and one against ferox 7-5 i just find it hilarious that xenox is still chilling oh no now you have to see my face in full screen this is incredibly disappointing. I'm sure you guys just wanted to see Xenox anyway, but oh well, I'm just gonna keep on talking about these map picks. So oh, I can just write these ones down. It was Kanga who got the very first ban and they banned out Consulate, Wildcard banned out Border. Uh, and then we saw Theme Park picked, personally a map that I have never casted. So yay, I actually get to cast it for once. And uh, Xenox has also never casted it, and I'm sure he would express his absolute discontent at never having previously cast it if he was actually here. But he's dogging the boys right now, so I mean, that's what you gotta do. Wildcard, what did they pick? They pick Coastline. Oh man, I've seen some nuts plays from Wildcard on Coastline. They lost it 7 4 last season to Fnatic, but like I said, haven't played it in two months. On the flip side, Kanga also haven't played it in two months, in which they lost it to ferox apparently i now have a co-caster oh my goodness xenox don't ever leave me again please <laughs> uh for those who aren't aware melbourne has had some very wild storms uh since yesterday going into tonight uh, internet yeah, yeah, decided hey now's I a great time melbourne to drop too. out <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah okay okay well i mean i guess it's lucky that we both didn't cut out but you know someone's got to carry the broadcast i guess yeah yeah um <laughs> I think we dropped. I'm gonna fill you in, right? I, I missed the picks. I missed the picks. All right, I have to run us right, through no, that no, again. Let's, let's roll through. All right, guys. 
you guys in chat and me are going to help Xenox, all right? So first up, Kanga banned first. They banned Consulate, Wildcard banned Border. Kanga picked Theme Park, which uh, I know you're going to be looking forward to. I was saying I've never casted it before. I don't think you ever have either. Here we go. Going to roll through them again. And Wildcard picked up Coastline. Um, let, me, let me give you some context here, Xenox, and I'm sure you've probably mm. got the same kind all of right, notes. Go ahead. Kanga never played Theme Park. Wildcard never banned it, never picked it, but they played it twice and won it twice against LFO and Sinister. So a bit of a gamble here from Kanga. Two teams have already thought, we're going to take Wildcard to Theme Park, as it worked out. Um, and for Coastline, neither of these teams have played it in two months, and the last times they played it, they lost it. So a yeah. lot of um, speculating. Am I wrong, we'll though, in thinking that the Coastline pick is maybe more surprising? Yeah, I mean, they're... Yeah? I, I mean, they're both surprising, I, I like they're... but... I'm thinking from Kanga's perspective here, and I'm thinking, all right, we're going to just try something yeah. a bit different. Obviously, nothing's really working for us this season. Whereas Wildcard, I would have thought, would have maybe wanted to just keep things simple in the way that they've been playing really, really well this season. Mm. Look, that's actually a good point, because Wildcard could have just vaulted Kanga instead. Let's go to Clubhouse or Cafe, one of the maps that Kanga has played a ton, and Wildcard can just vod them and, and counter them. So a bit of a gamble from Wildcard, going with a map that they haven't shown and that Kanga hasn't shown, and maybe potentially actually leaking mm. some of their VODs that then might be used against them for later. Well, we are going to have a look at the poll votes. I don't think we will be too surprised by the results that are going to be shown up on our screen. 69% to 23. Wow, actually, actually you know what, Dev? I'll yeah. take that back. I'm surprised by the 23%. Uh, yeah, um, Kanga, I guess, got a lot of fans. In fact, one of the only Australian... Uh, based organizations in the league. Um, so maybe the, the Aussie fans out there are really rooting for Kanga. Maybe we've got a lot of people who like to go for the David instead of the Goliath. So eh, yeah. I'll, I'll take it. You know what? You're right, though, because that is the classic Australian spirit at the end of the day. We love our under underdogs, don't we, going into yeah. this sort of series, even for the neutrals. I'm sure they might be rooting for Kanga more so than Wildcard as we head into Theme Park, our first map of the night between Kanga Esports and Wildcard. A big ask in front of Kanga. Time to jump into it. My first time ever casting Theme Park. Yours too, Zanok. So it's not only fresh yeah. territory for Kanga here, but also for us too. Good luck, have fun, comes out in the chat. Operator bans, surely not a Thatcher. Don't, don't do it to us. Damn it, Kanga! Oh. Wildcard, why you gotta do that to us? Hey, don't blame Kanga. You're already getting uh, in, I, I, into I them. I thought it was Kanga for a sec, got it. Usually Kanga, uh, usually blue team starts on attack first. Uh, oh no, they do start on attack first. I don't know, I'm just confused, Never mind. Thatcher Thermite. Well. Thatcher Thermite, luckily not two hard breaches like we saw banned off last night in one of the series. And what's interesting is so far this entire season for Wildcard, they haven't played a single game where Ying was available. That now changes already going into this first map. This is very much a different style that we might see from Wildcard. Kanga tonight, like maybe records and previous results go out the window. And these operator bands are going to shape the play styles, especially on the attacking side. Really hamstrung here with the Thatcher and the Thermite taken off the board. Be leaning a lot into that Maverick, I expect. The Thatcher also, not just for wall denial um, counters. The Thatcher's great for getting rid of Banner batteries, Mute Jammers, etc. And banning that means you have to change things. But it's not just that that makes the difference here. But having that Thatcher ban means you can stack ADSs from Jaeger. You can also stack Wamai charges and really protect utility like Goyo shields, uh, Maestro cams, but typically just Goyo shields and deployable shields, uh, which are very powerful for controlling the choke points on this map. We might actually see Imarin switch over. Indeed, he does get off the Kayid and onto that Goyo. There is an Armory Throne Room defense first up, but I do like the setup that we're seeing that from Wildcard, at least thus far in the operator picks. So Kanga are going to be attacking first, and I think it's imperative that they get off onto the right foot. If they can win this first round, build momentum on their side, it's a stepping stone towards what would be, and in my honest opinion, the biggest upset of the season if Wildcard uh, it lose a map to Kanga. I think that's fair. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was the biggest upset Kanga saw last season as well, and um, maybe they can repeat it. I don't know. It's, uh, it's tough. But since Theme Park is still fairly new in the map rotation, and 
particularly in ANZ, hasn't seen a lot of play. This is the third right, time this map's ever been played in uh, in Oceania, at least in the, the pro level. So let's talk a little bit about how it plays. From a defensive perspective, you're really trying to funnel attackers into these choke points. So if we've got this top-down view, looking around, uh, particularly on the top floor, there's a lot of choke points and only a few places where you can actually open up the floor. You'll see on the right-hand side of your screen, the, there's a wooden floor. That then goes down onto the bomb site in A. And there are a couple angles you can also get onto B. So the attacker's often trying to do that to eliminate the positions of players on the bomb site. And to counter that, we often see defenders, when defending this armory throne room bomb site, go for quite a roam. And that's what Pat, Geo, and Diesel are going to be doing at the moment. Some information gathering with the Valkyrie cameras and information denial from the mute is going to make this quite the pain for Kanga. And any pain is not going to be fun pain for Kanga, boats. And Wayman looking to push in. The IQ is certainly going to help here. Although Campo already in front, leading the way. Still two minutes on the clock. And you have to wonder though, in terms of map pool, for both of these teams, how many times they've been playing well, theme park in preparation of this. Well, we know Wildcard have played it twice so far in the league and Kanga will no doubt have watched those VODs. Makes you wonder how much Kanga, oh, okay. Pat's caught off guard. Good opening pick for Leb there. Nice way to kick things off for Kanga, finding those picks onto those roamers. You see a lot of rotation holes opened up nice on and early between the defenses. And Leb's going to find his second, in fact, with the two kills. One more player roaming. It's Geo. We know how good he is. He's gotten an ace on this map before. But he gets taken down. No way. Oh, no. How did Wildcard come back from that? And that's two picks in response. Geo's still alive somehow. Diesel rotated up to support. And he gets a pick for it as well. That nade's going to finish the deal. Attack and Wayne Man finally team. salvages that. Three versus two with one minute left. Still an amazing start though from Kanka. Leb opening up with two entry frags. Followed up boats. Probably should have been able to kill Geo there. As you mentioned, Geo though was able to just stay alive. And Diesel was the bomb sites. And this is now where I think for Wildcard, all you can really do is play defensive, hold defensive positions and try and catch Kanga on the rotate. 30 seconds, and let's see, how are Kanga setting up for this push? They don't have full information about Gong and Tellers. They don't know if that's clear. 25, these guys really need to get a move on. Playing patiently, but that might actually backfire here for Kanga. They lose Wayne Man to Diesel, and now two versus two with only 13 seconds left makes it very difficult potentially for Kanga. Leb's low in that initial exchange with Diesel, and we're in on site, five seconds. And it's still not being... The plant's not going down at all here. Ooh. I think Kanga are going to lose this round. Everyone one tap takes out Leb. And from a very winnable position for Kanga, Wild come, come back and clinch the round one. It goes to show you can get that roam clear, waste two minutes. Uh, I mean, from Kanga's perspective, right? They got the two opening picks. There were two counter picks eventually from Wildcard. But after that roam clear, it took them two minutes and they were in a three versus two. They had numbers advantage. They didn't get a single kill after that. Kanga really struggling there, and it's not just on that roam clear, but also on the execute onto site. That numbers advantage really not helping them in the end. They had a, a severe lack of information. You saw just 30 seconds, 20 seconds ticking away, and there are players from Kanga still just face checking inside of Gong and maintenance and tellers. That starve, the, the starvation of information for Kanga really hurt them in the late round and the last three players attacking the bomb site also just missed times not supporting each other not able to get a refrag wild card good start to this map feels like a missed opportunity for kanga more than anything though now Leb opened it up with two entry frags. Yeah, there was a trade back, but after that, Kanga still had the numerical advantage for basically the entire round. And yet, as you mentioned, just took too long in trying to clear out Emma and Diesel. I think they played it really well for Wildcard, though, from their perspective. As I said, they held a bit more defensively, waited for Kanga to start moving around clearing areas, cut them off, and got kills one by one. We never saw Kanga sort of peeking an area two at a time and trying to do at least a 2-1 trade. Backfires, Wildcard get the first round, and you have to wonder how many times Kanga in this series are going to get opportunities like that. 
I think there was a bit of tunnel vision from Kanga. Once they realized the only Roma left was Geo, they just really focused on that. They didn't watch the flanks, and that's what enabled Diesel to really even up that man count. Bit of overzealousy as well from Boats as he was trying to peek Geo, but ran out of bullets. Really punished him. And then there was no immediate refrag as well. The Kanga players just not quite tight on each other on the entry frags. Let's have a look. It is a Bonx and Daycare defense for Wildcard with an extension over towards Office and Initiation. This is very staple stuff at a pro level. The attackers pushing in from Cafe. Good early control from Boats. But having Cafe control does not win you the round, especially when there are deployable shields, Goyo shields and the like facing towards this. Oh, what an angle there from Pat on the ACOG through that soft wall. Even stim up Ethan as well, potentially. Really good control and a good opening pick for wildcard. Well, that's also the power of daycare with these soft walls as well. Ammo. Ethan's going to get healed up from Pat. Wildcard firmly in control numbers wise. Wayman man with the diffuser still outside as well. As you mentioned, this is the round here. But a lot of the attention from Kanker siding over to this area of theme park with a minute and a half remaining. It's looking a little stale right now in terms of their push here in round two. Interesting decision from Kanga not to try to clear that initiation off the side and instead try to mainly focus on a west side take. Lev here trying to clear the player on the pink stairs. Difficult position, especially with that ACOX. Bruce does find one onto Geo. Good refrag though from Diesel. Now this is when we need Lev to get busy and take out. Oh, Diesel's actually been traded nonetheless by Wayne Man. Numbers advantage once again for Kanga, but we know three versus two doesn't seal the deal. But not only that, Wayman and Kempo are both low already too, so it doesn't take too much from either Ethan or Imran. 35 seconds. Even the shotguns probably not even need. Pistol might just do the job. Oh boy. Kanga don't want to blow this now though either. They had that advantage in the first round. But as I said, doesn't take much here from Imran. As soon as they run onto the site, you do feel like he's going to be able to at least get one here. Ethan holds the yellow corridor, and Emron does get left. There's no trade back, though, from Kanga. That makes it even more difficult now, considering how low both Wayman and Campo are. Immediate tap from Emron. The second will get the kill. Ethan finds Campo, and Wildcard get two rounds now from two rounds at a deficit. That's two 2v3s in a row as well. I'm not sure if it was, was it the same players potentially. No, Ethan was surely killed out on that previous one. Diesel in the first I round. Think, yeah, was it? It was Diesel and I'm gonna say Pat. Emo. Who was? The, oh, was it Diesel and Emo? Okay, so oh, there you go. Emo's involved in two two v threes. Doing pretty well first round. First two rounds rather. Of course, with that Thatcher ban in particular, this does get quite difficult for the attacking side. Kanga trying to suppress some of these roamers using the Nomad, but Wildcard are really just allowing the time to tick down. And even though they're losing a lot of engagements, a lot of gunfights, not just one versus one, but uh, uh, trade battles where there's a few kills come out sequentially, they're losing those. They're coming out at numbers disadvantages, but these Wildcard players, even at a deficit, are happy to just sit back and wait for Kanga to start filing them through. They know they have that individual skill that game sense to know exactly when to peek, what to peek. And their positioning has been impeccable as well. Wildcard have played it really well too when they do get to that numbers disadvantage in those first two rounds, falling back, playing the bomb site. And that's where Kanga sort of stall themselves a bit. They get to just outside the bomb site, but just lack that critical ability to then push on, clear out corners. And that's where Wildcard just continue to find that early pick at that section of the game. So even if it's two versus three, they keep finding that early pick and making it then 2v2. 2v2 with like 20 seconds left. And with the diffuser nowhere close to being planted, all that takes is that one kill, then puts all the pressure back onto Kanga. As you said though, Kanga are getting these opening picks, they're getting these entry frags. They're pushing him well onto theme park, but just not executing that final play. Another interesting philosophy from Kanga is that they're deciding for the most part not to force these choke points that Wildcard is setting up. For example, here on the B-bomb site, a use of a deployable shield. On the other side, you can see facing towards control with a mute jammer and reinforcements inside of initiation, right where Geo is sitting. 
There you go, that Goyo shield just going to make it very difficult for Spruce to peek on through. And typically in that previous round, Kanga decided to just bypass this kind of push instead. And Spruce, you would think, oh, just throw an Ash Charge in there. But Wildcard, they're banking on that. They will have stacked ADSs here, knowing that it's going to be very difficult for Kanga to clear out this utility and push on through. Spruce is set up for now, but I'm not sensing he's going to push through for at least a while. Take a few shots, just keep eyes over towards his location in control room. Clear out the ADS. Oh, oh no! What a play from Pat. Just having that information that Spruce was behind the control panel there gets a C4. Fortunately for Spruce, I believe he successfully used his Ash Charge on that Goyo Shield, so at least his utility wasn't wasted. It's just that map awareness, though, from Pat coming into play. Spruce had no idea. He gave away his position. They knew he was in there for 30 seconds or so. Made in from Wayne, man. Plenty of time still remaining. Campo finds a pick onto Ethan. Second one followed up from Boats. Emerin able to at least get one back. And it's a similar situation now to what we saw in the first two oh, rounds. No. C4 goes out. Oh. Risky play. Doesn't it's shot out of the air. Though. Oh, well, that's one way to make sure it doesn't connect. Skeet shooting from Boats and Kanga. Campo's low as he takes a massive tag. 50 seconds remaining, but this is where we see Wildcard really turn the game back into their advantage. In position. Still a lot of this round left, 40 seconds, but Kanga, they might have the bomb site, but not sure that'll matter at this point. No more air jabs left for Campo. He's going to try to cover Wayne Man. He doesn't know where Wildcard are going to push from. And Wahima Rin, where was that, mate? All the way in through. Was that a wall bang, actually? Surely this was a wall bang. Yep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's one way to get Kanga tilted. <laughs> no way. <laughs> what? I mean, it I don't want to assume nuts. that he knew they were there or if that was just <laughs> intuition following through. But regardless, these first three <laughs> rounds, I mean, the eye test is that say Kanga haven't played bad dev I think they're just lacking that final ability to close out get that plant try and get control of bomb site the first two minutes is fine wildcard just coming up big in the clinch towards the end of these rounds and that's why they're up three nothing protect your bombs from being defused by attackers. I like the philosophy from wildcard on some of these defenses not so much thrown armory but on those top four defenses you'll notice both of those previous rounds wildcard won there was a point where they're like, oh, the attackers have the bomb site. That's cool. We're just going to wait. And as they start to plant, that means one of their players is occupied. So that three, ver or that two versus three there from Kanga's perspective was actually a one versus three. Because only, what was it, Campo? Only Campo was actually able to take a gunfight while Wayne Man was planting. I really like the philosophy one here time. from Wildcard. And even then, Campo had like very little health too, so it's not like he's running around peeking and trying to find these fights. All he was doing was just being a bodyguard for Wayne Man as he tried to plant the diffuser. Obviously, in the end, didn't even get that down. And so the wall bank. Emo started off amazingly though for Wildcard. I'm not entirely sure if he's actually died yet. Uh, I'm going to say no. Get onto him. Yeah, because he yeah, was part of those first no. two rounds. Yeah, no, Six exactly no. right. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. 6-0, and, and he's been in two clutches and then got that Back double wall bank. So he has been instrumental in closing out all of these three rounds so far. MVP for certain for the first three rounds. We'll see if he can keep it up. Wild card have looked a little bit vulnerable in these first three rounds. It hasn't been clean. hasn't been as one-sided in the rounds particularly. Well, the scoreboard says 3-0. The rounds do say that Kanga are at least playing decent enough. Just lacking that final third ability. Good use of the U-Sil from boats, getting rid of those goo mines and dark blue cameras and default cameras as well, I guess. Once again, this heavy roam upstairs. Kanga losing some drones to it. Spruce gets out of position, but dangerous now, trying to push on through. Spots out that rotation in break room. Cautious of these arcade stairs, but in fact, Wildcard are just shooting some drones and then falling back to the bomb site. A C4 goes off, misses Leb. Almost had the information it needed, but I'm pretty sure Wildcard have just completely abandoned here. They've wasted half the round, a bit of utility, shot in a few drones, and now they're back on site. 
Oh no, they just changed where they're roaming. They're roaming downstairs now. So they shot drones yeah. and now Kanga has to rejoin them and Kanga's just gonna run out of drones. But it buys so much time though for Wildcard, making it a lot more difficult for Kanga. As you said, clear out those drones, make them think, okay, they might be on the second floor, push back down the first floor. And then as we can see, still holding off site. Not everyone's on site. There's I think one or two for Wildcard. But then this is where, if they lose those initial engagements, what we've been seeing from Wildcards, then they'll send everyone back to the bomb sites, play more defensive, and clean up the round from there. So Kanga do a, a, a kind of attack that we see much more typically in ranked, which really just involves a, a five-man attacking squad trying to crack a five-man on site. We might see some Wildcard players on this downstairs roam. Move over. Ooh, c is going to toss over, try and kill this Maverick. He's already pre-ripped it so that Kanga won't hear the sound of him pulling out the C4. Throws it over. Oh, and misses. That's unfortunate, but Wayne Man does take some damage for it. And if he only can land a slug here, that'll be the end of it. Can't get that wall down either. Makes it even more difficult for Kanga. They're running out of time though. I don't think Wayne Man has any chance to get that wall down now. Wildcard just cleaning up Leb. Campo go down. And the trades will go all in favor of Wildcard as they take out round number four. And that round was way more convincing. I really like the read from Wildcard. The first time they uh, defended that bomb site, they lost the roam game. It wasted two minutes, but they ended up at a two versus three from Wildcard's perspective. This time around, they shot a few drones. They went downstairs, had a bit of a roam, but mostly just a, a turtle on site. And then Kanga took so much time to get started. The first engagement happened with only 13 seconds left on the clock. Which is interesting because the first three rounds weren't really played that way in terms of time. No. We were probably seeing Kanga getting a few picks around the one to one and a half minute mark earlier on that they could capitalize. This round though, as you said, just 13 seconds left on the clock is not enough time. Even just the Maverick taking so long from Wayne Man at the end to try and get that wall down unsuccessful, realize, okay, I've got no time. I just have to start shooting through the doorway. I'm not sure if it was intended for Kanga to wait that long. I don't think it was part of their game plan. I feel like, from Kanga's perspective, the first time they attacked Throne and Armory, it was the closest round they've got so far. They're 4-0 down, but that was the closest they got to winning a round. When Wildcard get to re-attempt that after they've seen Kanga take it once, it's the most convincing round that Wildcard has taken. And that just goes to show how good Wildcard are at adapting between these rounds. Five seconds remaining. 100%. Like, you're 4-0, and zero, and yet only really one of those rounds were like super convincing. But it messes with the morale a bit of Kanga. This is aggressive from Diesel. It's getting more and more difficult for Kanga as this map goes on. Starting on the attack as well does make things challenging, especially on a, a new map like this. Theme Park tends to be a bit defender sided with these operator bands in particular. And Wildcard are just so good at their defenses. Wildcard, I, I, I believe, would have get to choose uh, which side they started on attack or defense and i think this is a good decision from wildcard to start yeah in fact they did get to choose and they chose defense first so wildcard wanted to start the ground uh, this round on their terms start this game off really put kanga under the pump and have no mercy well that was a discussion we had last night in terms of the mats and the stigma around some of the maps being considered defender sided and how ferox kind of smashed through console at 6-1 on the or you know, 5-1 on attack, but right now, Wildcard, I think, leading up to the stigma here on Theme Park. Good adaptation from Diesel. In the previous defense of this bomb site, he had his Goya Shield in a more passive position. This time, he uses it to hold Cafe, which is the place that Kanga rode last, uh, attacked from last time. Nice in initial engagement. Good that both got the trade there, but Diesel did manage to finish off Spruce first. And that's really an essential pick. Smart move from Diesel to at least secure that one. Ensures the trade. And that's some good utility eliminated as well. Three flashbangs and two ash charges. But better from boats there because if he doesn't push back and go for that trade, they probably don't get control of Cafe. Not that easily at least. And then Diesel's still alive. So it's a, it's a worthy trade. Losing Spruce with Diesel, but get control of Cafe. You can start to push in. One minute remaining. Now you've got some time. You can make something happen here for Kanga. They're going to need to find at least a round or two here on their attacking side if they're going to have any chance 
going into their defensive half as we almost close out this first half. One minute to go here in round five. Kanga doing the exact same style of attack as they did last time, but Geo switched over onto the smoke from what he was previously playing, the dock. Droned out. He can delay so much time here. Two more gas babes in the pocket. Kanka trying to find angles and wildcard continuing to play quite passive. Still have that X factor of Ethan in office with a lot of options to rotate back over through cafe. Kanga really have to make their move soon. This is what we saw from them the last time we were on Bunker Daycare though, is that a lot of the pressure was over on the cafe side. Ethan, we'll get Campo. And now they leave themselves with very little amount of time and that's gonna make it even more difficult with Waitman going down. Round's gonna go to wildcard. And a blaze of glory goes down the bar plate. And for the second round in a row, another convincing win for Wildcard. It's just so difficult for Kanga to find their footing here on these attacks. And Wildcard, every time they reattempt a bomb site, it gets better and better. I really like that. I don't know. The I, I, I don't know where Kanga go from here, though, going into this last yeah, round, yeah. Dev. I mean, like, it's so tough. Tried everything. Going... Yeah, and you're going up against a wild card that is just improving their defenses with every single round. Over the first three rounds, the first time they did a, a around the world, if you will, of these bomb sites, they played reasonably aggressively, and that was cool for Kanga because they won a lot of these engagements and uh, won a lot of the initial trade battles. And then later on, wild card decided, hey, if we play passive, we don't give them anything. They're just going to stand around and mm -hmm. wait until the last ten seconds to push Attackers in. Attackers need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they can. I do wonder if the Habana pick here might be a bit wiser here for Wayman in terms of hard breaching a bit quicker than the Maverick. Definitely didn't feel like the Maverick was being utilized to the best that they would have wanted, was taking a long time, was being denied as well. A couple of times with like the C4, for example. This might potentially change things for Kanga. I think they only actually use the Maverick Torch when they're attacking Throne, and as you mentioned, it was way too little, way too late. But that Hibana, of course, you need to be careful of any mute jammers placed on these walls. Not sure whether Imarins will be primarily using them for wall denial or drone denial, but yeah, here you go. So this is probably the most important wall that you would want to Hibana. And they're gonna have to clear out that mute jammer. And what's difficult there is, well, the floor underneath that mute jammer is indestructible, so you can't shoot it from below. The only way to get rid of that mute jammer, thanks to the Thatcher being banned, is either with a Kali or by throwing some kind of grenade through that doorway. It's a lot of work. You have to burn that ADS first and then bank a nade off there, but there are no nades on this lineup, so it, it really doesn't look possible for them to open up this wall with Hibana. And limits their options. You'd have to think Wildcard are aware of that as well. And they were the ones who banned out the Thatcher. So, last attacking round now for Kanga, last opportunity, and then I guess they'll at least be able to have their own defender's side here on Theme Park. But long way in the hole at the moment here, zero and five. If you only just joined us though, the first three rounds, they, have, they were pretty close. Yeah, they're pretty close. Kanga won a lot of those initial engagements and the trade fights, but as I mentioned, Wildcard just began to play passive and that worked out well for them. They played on Kanga's weakness, which is time. The utility clear working pretty well for Kanga though so far. Wasting those ADSs and Spruce using his Ash Charge to get rid of that shield. Just a normal deployable shield. And in fact, no deployable shield inside of initiation facing towards control. Bit an opportunity here for Pat as he jumps out a window. No Claymore placed and Ethan's going to grab one as well. Man, once again, Kanga really struggling. And Leb's low as well from that exchange as he has to fall back. And struggling is probably understated here. Spruce, close to finding Emo. Spruce has been in here almost, I think, every single time. This bomb site, one minute remaining. Does he try and be a little bit more aggressive here? He's got one to his left, one to his right. One of them is Emo, the other one at Geo. It's impossible, you'd think, to clear them both out. A crossfire with two shotguns. Especially playing as an ACOG, that's never going to happen. Geo still has two gas babes left. He can waste the whole round here in initiation. Kanga really need to get creative here and find some explosive picks. 
AB Leb's the man to do it. No, apparently not. Someone's gonna have to step up. Who's it gonna be? Well, Spruce at least puts his hand up for an opportunity to maybe complete the comeback, but considering they are both getting peppered right now, Wayne Man and Spruce. Almost had an opportunity. Diesel picks up the double kill. 10 seconds left and one versus three for Wayne Man. That's going to be the round. That's going to be the half. Zero and six for wildcard. Wayne Man will go for the plant. Just buys a bit of time and then while they all just rush him as soon as he even thinks about that. Hey, worth a shot. Why not? I mean, never give up. Never give up. I, I, who knows? Maybe they're going to run into a Claymore. Maybe they'll accidentally team kill. Whatever. Don't, don't, don't just pad the stats. You always got to go for those ones. That was a 2v5 became a 1 versus 3. So finally, we did see a couple of kills, a couple of entries, and that map, or that bomb site control, I should say, taken by Wayne and Boats, I believe it was. But it really was too little too late. And as we observed there for the third time, Wildcard, once the pressure really comes on, and it's late round, and the attackers swarm into the bomb site, Wildcard are just going to vacate and say, yeah, that's all right, you can have the bomb site. Now try and plant, see what happens. That's a flawless defense as well for Wildcard. Puts them on match point. Really puts the pressure on here for Kanga. And no doubt there's going to be some kind of emotional, mental pressure as well. Not only has Kanga got a comeback with a flawless defense of their own, but Wildcard, they'll be feeling pumped right now. They could just go full send, send five people down from one place, go for a rush, I don't know, do something a bit cheesy. And that's this is the kind of situation when that works, because Kanga is a bit... Uh, zoned out, bit maybe potentially tilted. I don't want to, you know, make it out like it's something they're not. I don't want to say that Kangaroo is necessarily tilted after this, but I mean, who wouldn't be a little bit affected by that scoreline? Mm. Ten seconds left well, I did say in the pregame there's only one way bet up for Kanga. Unfortunately, it looks like they've found another level. If they do lose this 7 0, it would be the first map this season of Six Masters, where a team does get 7-0. So uh, right now, I think for Kanga, you obviously are feeling like, okay, we're probably not going to win this series. Let's at least try and win and do well on our defensive side. Get a couple of rounds and regain our composure as we then go into coastline. Last time Kanga got smacked about this hard, it was uh, Pro League, their sixth game back in March, over two months ago now. It was on Clubhouse. They got smacked about by Sinister. And since then, you know, Kanga hasn't been too bad. They're yet to win a map at all in anything Pro League or, or Six Masters since that game. But, you know, a 0-7, surely not. At least get a couple rounds here. Yeah. I, I think if they can get three and make it 7-3, that's job done in my eyes in terms of just being able to Come stay competitive. He did say that on theme park it is slightly more defensive sided and saying that though, i think a team like wildcard can overcome that and make it a challenge here for kenga along with the wamai well, on way men something different compared to what we saw from the defense of wildcard i was actually surprised not to see the walk uh wamai from wildcard really powerful operator especially for uh holding these choke points protecting your shields etc Wildcard, i guess didn't need him in the end I'm fascinated to see that Wildcard is not actually going for the east to west push over from Cash and Office, etc. But instead going for a cafe kind of push similar to what we saw from Kanga. There's a nice early one from Ethan. Drones out Spruce and finishes him off. Pushing in downstairs. And that early pick may help convert to the victory here. Nice clean 7-0. Good map control for Wildcard. Propelling on the windows, cafe control and downstairs bottom arcade. What can they do with it? One minute, one minute left though, but this is where Kanga, if they're not already on site, probably need to start falling back to site. And Ethan does find Wayne Man. Is a horrible disadvantage now. 5-3. Wildcard starting to collapse onto both bomb sites, A and B. Dio still playing at arcade. He's going to start to push up the stairs. I think it's a matter of time now until Wildcard make this 7-0. Tried to be optimistic for Kanga, but... They've really met their match here on, on Theme Park, and I, I'd hate to say it, Dev, but this was their map pick as well. Forcing this plant down is Diesel in the corner. Safe spot. Campo does find one. 
It's a good start, but Campo and Leb are going to have to really turn up the heat here. It's a two versus four. Make that a one versus four. All on Campo now, roaming over in initiation. 30 seconds to find four kills and defuse. And he's on such low hull. 25 seconds. Campo. Hey. Barbary. Well, uh, yeah. He well, <laughs> does get Ethan. A bit of a flashy oh, way to no. go. And then T4 is in Gulf. Accepting his fate and accepting the fate that Kanga gets 7-0. The first team to get 7-0 on the map this season of Six Masters. Well, what a way to go, at least. On your own terms. Uh, that's one way to put it. Xenox, on your own terms. I don't think I've ever seen a game quite like this. That was very one-sided from Wildcard. Demonstrating excellence. And, yeah, like you said, by the end of it, Campo had accepted his fate. No donuts from either team, so all of them gave it a crack. And, yeah, Wildcard, well-deserved victory, just propelling themselves further up the standings. I feel a little bit bad for Kanga Esports because their season, unfortunately, Dev does continue to just go in a downward trajectory. I did say in the pregame, and it was, it was probably more hopeful than anything that they would start to potentially turn things around. But I won't lie, this was always going to be the worst team to try and do that mm. against a team like Wildcard, who's destined to finish in the top four at the minimum with the way that they've been playing this season. Yeah, it's great for Wildcard. If we talk about them for a second, these guys, last season, they had their worst season that we've seen in a really long time. They flunked out of Six Invitational without winning a map. They came back in Pro League and ended up, I think it was fourth behind Akami, Elevate, Fnatic. Wildcard just weren't looking great. They made these roster changes. It was a bit shaky at first, but coming into Six Masters, they are safely and securely number one in Oceania right now. That's quite a thing to boast. And the, what a way to establish your dominance. Just 7-0 Kanga in about half an hour it took them. Yeah. And that's the thing as well for Wildcard. The fact that now they've also got really a decent amount of footing on Theme Park. It's the third time they've played it, third time they've won it. A little bit surprised that Kanga ended up picking Theme Park. Obviously backfired. We've now obviously seen that. We've got the hindsight for that 7-0. If you're going into this half now, going into Coastline, you Kanga, you're going into Wildcard's pick as well. Is the goal just here to not be humiliated and get 7-0 again? Like, what are the team goals going into this game? I mean, depending on how Coastline fits into Kanga's map pool, this totally could be a, a much, much better showing because Kanga made a huge gamble on Theme Park, knowing that Wildcard are decent at it, but never pick it. Coastline, we haven't seen either of these teams play it or pick it in two months. So anything could happen. Mm. Anything could happen as we go to a break. On the other side, it's going to be Coastline. Currently, we are one nil up in favor of Wildcard.
passports, baby. Leave the rest in our troubled minds. Let us go down and left a baby. Trying to figure out what we're after. We're never heading back until we're older. We couldn't care no more, not any longer. On the peach, yellow skies, we keep on searching. But we will never know. Wildcard ended up running away with Theme Park 7-0. Our first 7-0 of this season of Six Masters. Here for play day number eight. Kangaroo are definitely going to have to turn things around as we head towards coastline. Nuts. Nuts stuff. That's what it was. And it just it was like a snowball just slowly getting bigger and bigger. And it had Ema Rin's face on it. Because uh, yeah. that was... Uh, <laughs> I mean, that 2K right through the wall... I think the players were as confused as us watching that one. And uh, man, I would love to, I'd love to know what was the Discord was like when they won that, uh, because the, I'm sure they would have cracked up laughing just like I did. It was nuts stuff. And uh, I mean, Wildcard are just showing why they're at the top of the standings and really proving that they are the best team in Oceania. Mm. Yeah, and it's interesting you bring up that because it was at that point that he got that 2k through the soft wall. He was 6-0, and zero, three rounds go to wildcard, and those first two rounds, they had to win from a deficit where it was two versus three, and Emo was part of all three of those rounds, obviously. And so he was the MVP for that first half. I think because of that, considering the four rounds after that were really quite one-sided, probably the MVP of Theme Park in, in total then. Yeah, I'm not sure what the final KD was, but... In terms of opening picks, so the first engagements in the round, Kanga only won that once. In the very first round, Leb got the first two picks. Wildcard mm. managed to pull it back and win the two versus three afterwards. But every round subsequently, it was just Pat, Ethan, Diesel going off and really giving the advantage early on to Wildcard. Everyone at home, of course, has the opportunity to poll their vote. 23% thought Kanga, 69% said wildcard, 8% on the draw. You know, we, we were both a little bit surprised, but look, as you said, Australian organization plus the on underdog factor. And people like the logo. Yeah, and the, and yeah, look, look, the logo is pretty cool too. 23% <laughs> there, I think are going to be wrong. And wildcard, yeah. as we head into coastline, definitely the firm favorites. And it is actually also their map pick, right? Kanga were the team that picked theme park. Yeah, that said, like we've been saying previously, Kanga haven't played this in two months. Wildcard haven't played this in two months. Unless these guys have scrimmed Coastline against each other, and I don't know who hmm. his scrim partners with who, unless if these guys have scrimmed each other, this is totally, 
totally a blank slate and anything could happen for either of these teams. So while this is Wildcard's map pick, there's no way that Kanga could have vodded Wildcard on this map, at least not from games that are two months or longer old. And the same thing for Wildcard. So this can totally go either way. But besides, the most recent times these guys both did play this game, this map rather, they lost it. So anything can happen and I don't want to count them out. I love the optimism though, that anything can happen attitude. And I think Kanga have got to have that exact same attitude as we head into Coastline. From a 7-0, can they turn things around in their favor? Coastline, Kanga, and Wildcard go into the second map. Well, you started map one by saying, Kanga, they've had a rough season. It can only go up from here. And well, I guess you jinxed it because they went 7-0, but they literally can only go up from here. If they win now one they round, <laughs> if they win one round, that's better than last map. So, surely, surely we'll see something. Kanga gonna get rid of the Hibana. An operator typically useful. The only hard breach are really that useful on this map. And pretty much just for those cocktail walls when attacking Hookah. But, we'll have to see some other way of clearing Hookah. Ying banned out by wildcard. Something they didn't get rid of on map one, but Kanga didn't seem interested in using it at all. However, this very small map, a lot of Opportunities for Ying. Wildcard don't want to deal with that. It's interesting that you bring up the Ying because, correct, it wasn't bent on Theme Park, but it also wasn't even used on Theme Park. So maybe she isn't as proficient on Theme Park compared to these other maps as Mira continues to get banned out quite regularly as well this season. Only now two or three bans less than Ying. So those are the two most banned operators this season of six masters and the coastline we go it is going to be kanga on the defense this time wildcard on the attack or at least something a little bit different compared to theme park where we saw wildcard defend first up hmm. let's see how it goes valkyrie and echo both in two great ops for information gathering while uh, valkyrie in particular can be utilized to very powerful effect on coastline a lot of good spots for outside valkyrie cameras cheeky spots for inside valk cams just great information gathering on the whole and you're gonna see a lot of information okay, gathering for kanga on this defensive lineup they've got the pulse as well as the valk bit of denial from info with the mute pretty steep a lineup here from the defense, very versatile, lineup on the attacking side. Some nades with the sled, soft breach, of course. Same thing with Zephyr. Uh, Ethan can find out all those Valkyrie cameras, especially the Pulse, other utility. Diesel as well. Capital, really powerful operator. Not as commonly picked in uh, Oceania as maybe some might expect, but really good for area denial with those incendiary bolts. And on a map like Coastline, where there's a lot of power positions, which are quite small in terms of their footprint you can really block them out using that capital with the fire bolts attackers are heading out to defuse a bomb and i mean wildcard of course picking coastline you'd have to think they've been screaming it in some fashion or at least in some way hmm. and yeah, no, no on, the, on the other end of the spectrum though kanga probably wouldn't have been expecting the coastline pick i mean that's something we can ask in the interviews after this map whether this was a bit of a surprise for Kanga. But I said it actually during the initial map ban phase where I was more surprised with the first line pick than, than the theme park pick just simply because of the fact that Wildcard is a team that's only dropped one map this entire season. And that was Clubhouse, but every map they've played, they've won on. Obviously, as you said, and we've spoken about, they haven't played Coastline at all. getting droned in now. Spotted out two players hanging out around Hooker and 90. This is the bar attack. Wait, sorry, kitchen attack rather. My bad. Spruce gets the lead off. That's Diesel going down. Oh, and he finishes a second as well. That's a mad run out. That never works, but I guess it does for Spruce. No possibility for a refrag here, but man, that's, that's going to be really difficult for Wildcard to come back from. Well, as soon as you say that, Claymore from Ethan does get Campo, 4-3. Minute and a half. Still a lot of time left for Wildcard here, but now they've lost Emo immediately, as I said that. Lev gets that kill. Pushing in. Geo is spotted immediately through the doorway, and that's while well, you stand in the doorway. Typically, you're going to go down, and Kanga at least open up coastline with a round win. They're on the board. 
Yeah, and they have done something that they couldn't master on Theme Park, which is win a round, so... Little golf clap for them. It really did spiral. I was a bit worried there for Kanga after Campo jumped out and was taken out by that Claymore. I thought, hmm, maybe you don't need to get super aggressive after you win the three rounds, but Wildcard got a little bit desperate, a little bit impatient. We spectated Geo while he was pushing through Hall of Fame, or Guitar as it's known, looking towards the 90 position, but his ACOG was completely obstructing his view into Theodore. That's where he got peaked. He didn't see where it came from. Bit of a uh, an error from GeoWise, guess, but I'm really just confused about the fact that Spruce was allowed to not only go for that run out, but get two picks Attack with it. Need to locate and as many Wildcard fell asleep at the wheel there. Look at that surprise, the unconventional play. Not expecting Spruce to go for that run out, just letting their guard down slightly. Wild card, as you said, falling asleep potentially at the wheel. It's better from Kanga though, and I like the aggression from Spruce to actually even try that run out, to try something a bit different for Kanga, and it worked. It did get them those two kills, and from there they were able to spiral that into the round win. If you don't try those plays and you play defensive and you allow Wild card to play their way, you're probably going to end up with another 7 0 under your belt. Yeah, well, good on Kanga for really taking Defender the fight to their opponent. Is Love your boats. Look at that. Boats and Spruce both going for runouts. Two ACOGs to boot with the Rook and Doc. Ambitious stuff from Kanga, but it just goes to show this might be Wildcard's pick. And Kanga, yeah, they got absolutely smacked about on Theme Park, but they're coming into Coastline full swing. And that's the kind of attitude that is a winning attitude. And you said it. I mean, Coastline here, I think if Kanga can play well on their defense, pick up four or five rounds, which would be amazing for them. There's a big opportunity to maybe take a map away from Wildcard. They've yet to actually get a map win this season. Pat gets Campo. And this time the opening pick goes the way of Wildcard compared to that first round where it was the Spruce run out that got the opening double. Oh my god. Are they running out Hookah again? Campo literally just died doing a hookah run out. The same place that Spruce ran out the first round. Well, I can't punish that one. Kanga's still going for it. They really don't have a care in the world. Max. Spruce just running around as he pleases right now. All around the map. They might just catch Wildcard off. Attackers have located a bomb. Although you don't want to be doing the same run out three, four times in a row. Probably. Quiet moment here for Wildcard. Let's see where they're attacking. Taking control of Theatre, 90, top white. Emerin getting droned up by Pat now into luggage. Pat gonna check this corner. Emo pushes in. Ethan also on the aqua balcony. Wayne Man in billiards. Takes out that drone from Pat, but Emo's there ready to push up. Looks like Wildcard are shaping up for an Aquarium push. Pretty normal stuff, especially with that Hibana ban. It's quite difficult to do a VIP-centric push. Early C4, wasted. Lack of intel there from Wayne Man, no doubt. Or boats, not sure which one it was. 45 seconds, Wildcard's starting to set up. Likely going to attempt to plant on the A-bomb here, but need to find a few more picks before that happens. Kanga have just reined it in a little bit, bringing it back over to the bomb sites, leaving this right to the final second for Wildcard. Doesn't help that Pat slow as well, making one area of entry a bit of a weaker point for Wildcard as they're trying to cover all angles. Ethan's going to be able to find at least one. That's Boris. That's an opening <laughs> pick potentially outside on to hook a deck. It's a nice spray. Wayman's going to get Geo finished off with the pistol from Pat. One v four though. Wildcard collapsing at the final seconds. They are going to take this round, barring something massive from Leb. Leb's got to find at least this pick, and man, there's a crossfire on him. Not a chance there. Wild card from a four versus five, and in 20 seconds, classic wild card fashion. <laughs> He's been a bit confused there. <laughs> Wadu. I wanted Pat. <laughs> 
They're just you're trying to claim Pat back on his team. Head pats. I, I don't know what this is in the chat right now, but I love it. <laughs> Friendly banter is always fun banter, right? That's how you want it to be, generally. But yeah, there was nothing happening there for wildcard. In classic wildcard fashion, leave it to the last 20 seconds to make something happen. And it works. Well, they got that initial pick really early on. After that, it was a five versus four. 20 seconds left. Finally find well, quite a few picks. I'm not sure if... Uh, I don't think Kangaroo actually managed to get more than one pick in response. I love to see that yeah, Nomad charge. I don't know if you noticed the wow. air jab knocked one of the Kanga players all the way through the wall in Hookah. He just smacked down. And uh, Pat on the balcony was like, what's happening here? I mean, from what I saw in terms of wildcard, what they were able to do well there was just surround the bomb sites and have, rather than everyone sort of funneling in from one direction, making it very easy for Kanga. They were at least able to have multiple different angles opened up. Kanga's just not going to be able to cover them all. And I mean, as you said, then last 20 seconds, push in, everyone starts to sh peek and shoot at once. And well, Kanga just folded like a deck of cards. So, a bars defense now. Pretty good bomb site in uh, comp, but not super played in rank. So, maybe a lot of you guys who haven't seen as much comp not so familiar with this bomb site. The idea is to try to deny a plant in A, which is blue bar, from as many different locations as possible, particularly opening up holes in this wall into the courtyard so that you can shoot anyone from courtyard. Nice little job there. And then, of course, extending as much control as possible. This position at couches in Sunrise is really powerful. That's where Campo will be playing. There's also a position set up right near the B-bomb with a deployable shield in this corner. But for the most part, Kang is going to extend their hold, as I mentioned. Boats in office, players upstairs as well. Spruce also extending horizontally. Wildcard pushing from this east side top floor. Good control. Already three players in the building and a drone. Pat, a long angle here. He can cut off a lot of rotations into billiards here. You'd think the plan for wildcard this round is probably not to leave it to the last second. And even though it worked in that last round, ideally you want to give yourself a bit more time than, what was it, 15, 20 seconds remaining. They oh, spotted Ethan. Ethan able to just get out of the way though. Ethan looking to pinch here. This player side of Cocktail. Another player in Billiards. This is that top floor presence from Kanga. But a vault over. Was that all the way back down? Or was... I didn't quite catch that. Wildcard are being very safe here. Just taking their time. Wayne Man still safe behind these reinforcements. Diesel drones him out. Leb is also trying to support from Hooker. Spruce might try and get a C4 off onto the player in VIP as well. We're scanning him on the pulse scanner. But Leb finds that first kill. Boats with a C4. Pat eventually... Finds that kill back. Spruce gets information on the player pushing all the way up. Lights up a bit of damage. Doesn't commit to the gunfight. This is a lot of health. This is a much better round for Kane compared to that last round. Jab in place. Air jab in place. Correct from Geo. 45 seconds remaining. Wildcard. Don't have the numbers. Don't have the time. But what they do have is the experience to capitalize even from an unfavorable position. We saw it on that last map on Theme Park. Lepto now makes it a 4 versus 2. We saw a couple of 4 versus 2 wins last night from Alofo. It's not going to happen here. Triple kill for Leb. And you find the quad onto Geo. Kanga are going to win the round. And look a lot better here on Coastline. That's the story so far. Big round for Leb. Man doesn't know when to stop. Yeah, that's a nice one from Boats as well. Cheeky wall bang. Nice to see Kang got back in this game compared to map number one, Wildcard. Really stole the show 7 0. Kang not only found one round, but they're very much in this for the long haul. On top of that, I've got to say, Coastline is one of those maps where you expect the defense is going to be a bit more challenging than the attack. Being such a small map, similar to Border. A lot of opportunities for attackers to really leverage that outside positions with their ACOGs and force the defenders out of their anchored defenders positions. Doesn't seem to be a stress at all for Kanga. They'll go back to Kitchen, a bomb site they've already attackers successfully defended. We'll look to wildcard to 
make some kind of uh, change of pace here. It's been a team effort from Kanga as well. They've been able to adjust their play style, a couple of runouts. Some successful, some not as successful. The thing is, we didn't really see too much from them on theme park because on, on the defensive side because they were attacking for six out of the seven rounds played. But they've looked decent here on coastline. And I said if they can get to about four wins here on defense, I'd be pretty happy. Who knows? You get to 3-1 and they might be aiming for more than four. Even a 3-3 half would be satisfactory here in my eyes. Defense on coastline. Kanga's been doing a great job of leveraging this information gathering, consistently bringing this pulse from Spruce. Got those two runouts in the first round. Good information in that second round as well when he was just keeping an eye on those players in VIP from below. He did spot out the player outside office, but that pulse scanner only has a range of about nine meters, so Emo's gonna get back out. Spruce won't quite know his position. Gonna try to pre-fire through this wall into blue bar. Boats as well. That lets Wildcard know Kanga's aware of their positions. Good Valk cam taken out there as well for Emo. All drone up. I think for Wildcard too, you also don't want to get too comfortable with how they performed on Theme Park. Then coming to Coastline, I think this is going to be easy. Oh! Damn. No, that wasn't what I thought it was, was it? No, it wasn't, but it was a, <laughs> uh, a cheeky attempted a wallbang from Pat, responded to a uh, wallbang from Wayne, and that one was actually successful. It's been a bit chaotic this round, though, early on, and that plant's actually going to be taken Attack put down by Diesel user. very early, in a minute and a half. The fuser does protected. get planted. In a pretty favorable position as well for Wildcard. The entry, Ethan now finds a second onto Wayne Man. Triple kill. Doesn't quite get the COD though. Both able to get one back. Diesel just outside the door. It's going to be very difficult here. You'd think that both are probably going to clear this barbed wire run out and get the kill onto Diesel. 24 seconds, a lot of time. Reload. He's not sure where he is though. He doesn't have the position. Diesel's just going to wait till the last second. Yeah, and Diesel's got that utility as well. How many more incendiary bolts has he got? It's getting toasty for boats here and. That's a seven second defuse timer. It's not possible. That's how to win it with the utility. A desperate attempt from boats. Doesn't matter. Diesel's not going to give him a thing. Oh, no. Lovely post plant there from the Capital. Well, there was a specific round on Theme Park. For the life of me, cannot remember it. But you said how Kenga would be feeling after that loss. Well, that one was probably more impactful potentially in terms of how you're feeling when you think you cannot do anything. There's nothing he could do there. <laughs> the only way to uh, the worst feeling. win that is, yeah, oh, so it must be so frustrating for boats, especially because he did claw it back from that one versus two to the one versus one. I gotta say, Diesel really uh, blew me away that round. I don't know how it went from Kanga getting the first two opening kills to Diesel being like, oh, I'm just going to plant the diffuser. Attackers CC, I plant. And diffuse as many bombs as they can. I think the best thing that Diesel was able to do there was to play patiently in that situation, understand how much utility he's got left, positioned himself really far back so that if the runout did occur, he wasn't just going to be franked out immediately by bones. You saw boats peeking to the right initially. Diesel was super far back and just understood the situation entirely and how it was playing out. Wildcard 2-2. Two, two. Well, you said 3-3 three, three at the half. Kanga would be happy with that. I mean, I tend to Five agree still insertion. considering what we saw in Theme Park. Really anything from here has been a bonus Attackers for them compared to, to Theme Park. And 3-3 three, three on your defense is still very much a winnable game on Coastline. Keeping in mind, as we were mentioning in the pre-show, this map is a bit of a black spot on the radar for both of these teams, neither having played it in the last two months. Mm. Both of them likely would have reworked significantly their strategies and playstyles on this map. So 
both teams here going into it with very limited information. That puts all the more pressure onto these mid-game adaptations between rounds, learning how your opponent is playing and changing things. I mean, clearly, though, Wild kind of come in with at least some sort of strategy in some vein because they picked the map. Maybe they just wanted to try something. I mean, that sounds a bit BM, but maybe they picked Kanga as a way to test how their coastline is in a competitive environment outside of scrims. A wild card is one of those teams that's very confident to make adaptations mid-game. Doesn't just have to be at the start of a or between a VOD, and that's the first pick. Spruce gets that two for Spruce, is it? Damn. Just the one. Ema in taken out. On the dock. Oh, Pat, perfect recoil control. Outplays Spruce there on that tight angle. Eventual refrag. I swear it's been super aggressive on coastline thus far. It's been working for the most part, though. I think Pat, obviously, getting the better of him there by literally a pixel inch-wise in terms of vision. But I credit the way that Spruce has been playing. Cheeky wallbang from Ethan, well off the mark for Boats. Obviously, has boats a bit of idea of his location, right though, yeah. Yeah. Plant going really down plan. here for Diesel. I don't think there's an opportunity to deny this. And once again, Diesel just gets that service plan off. 40 seconds of post plant for Leb and Wayne. Two versus four, though. As you said, another early plant. Two in a row now for Wildcard. You're getting these early plants, and then not only that, but you're still fracking out. You're still finding Kanga around the map. You have to wonder where it's kind of going wrong right now for Kanga. They're just not having enough present on enough presence on the actual site you know that spruce and a few others like boats are, are currently roaming around so two three wild card take their first lead here on coastline anger started strong but it's very much possible that wild card have figured him out and bounced back here after Kanga in the very first round won their kitchen service defense, since then they've tried it two more times. And Wildcard has taken it away from them. We'll go back to Blue Bar and Sunrise Bar, the only other bomb site Kanga has been successful on this far. And it was a close one as well. Wildcard, the team, we know they are good at those between round adaptations. They learn how their opponent plays and changes their playstyle to counter that. Ooh, Kanga, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna do that, Spruce. <laughs> Hello. Attackers need to locate and defeat. I mean, Spruce is just on something at the moment. The way that he's been playing here on coastline, the runouts now, the cap can. He's definitely trying a bit of everything. Some work, some don't. But you love to see the adaptation and the confidence to try these things. I mean, you'd know more than me here of what maybe Spruce might be thinking with the cap cam. It's tough because the cap cam, I mean, obviously an operator not picked very much at the competitive level. Typically, players who are in uh, in this level of play aren't expecting cap cam traps uh, because it just doesn't get played much. So in some ways, it can be good. Maybe you'll catch pro players off guard by putting some cap cam traps down. That said, as soon as Wildcard drones out one of these cap can traps, they're gonna say, hey guys, there's a cap can. And I'm not confident this will be effective. It's possible. A little bit of information gathering, I guess. If you hear one of those cap can traps explode, it does let you know what, where some of these attackers are. But if one of those traps detonates, that's 60 HP gone from an attacker. I mean, he's done his job now. He's placed his traps and he can hold a bit more of an aggressive position if he wants to and that's what spruce has been doing so far here on coastline playing aggressive couple of runouts and i guess that's probably the benefit of something like cap can you can put those traps down place them all and then you've used all of your gadgets now you, if you if you do die at least you've still got something left back for your team diesel's just trying to look for spruce at the moment you can see wildcard playing so slowly fairly distinctive of their play style and it does 
counter quite effectively this very aggressive and, and cheeky playstyle that we see from Kanga. See, Wildcard's happy to sit outside the map and just pre-aim windows. If Kanga keeps peeking them, they're going to lose their heads like Campo did. Bomb located by attackers. Minute 40 remaining. As he said, I mean, the way that Kanga have been playing, they're sort of inviting this pressure from Wildcard, and Wildcard are more than happy to oblige, sit back, Wait for them to peek, knowing that they're going to peek. Nemo, who was probably the MVP on theme park, only just found his first kill on coastline so far. Bit of a rougher first half. Diesel oh, pushes man. straight in onto the B bomb site. It's going to be another early plant, three rounds in a row. And while that's happening, all of Kanga have just been wiped out. Lebs in a one versus four, now one v three. After he's able to find Diesel, a lot on his shoulders here. But a big reward if he's able to pull off the 1v3. They can tie up the half 3-3. Three, three. A lot of work to do, though, for Leb. So little time. 30 seconds. pre fires his left corner. Doesn't find a new one. Ethan is low, so it's more like a 1 versus 2.5. The position, the plant, the time, and the numerical advantage that Wildcard has got. It's going to be 4-2. And it is. And Wildcard end the half. As you mentioned before, snowballing. Well, they've snowballed to a 4-2 lead. We always talk about Wildcard being that slow and methodical team. We did see quite a lot of that in some of the early rounds, perhaps. But uh, somehow, Diesel's just been like, hey, I can plant here. I'm just going to do it. Three rounds in a row. An early plant goes down. Diesel, not keen to just wait around. He wants to get busy. He wants to get into the thick of it. Planted three times now. Every single time Wildcard's taken the rounds, Kanga don't really have a response to that plant. Perhaps the Echo could have been an answer, but they didn't bring it, not even once, for that plant denial. Straight out of the gate, wild card with Echo left unbanned. They're going to jump straight on it. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. You said 3-3 would give Kanga an opportunity going into their attacking half. 2-4. Better than theme park, but with wild card's proficiency in their attacking on the defensive and how they are defensively. I do get the feeling that it's going to be difficult here for Kanga to find many rounds here on Coastline. It's not their pick. Mm. As you mentioned, it's been months since they've played Coastline. Wildcard better prepared for it. I mean, I'm not going to say that it's going to be 7-2, but it's probably very likely that it could be 7-2, 7-3, more so than anything else. Yeah, from here on out, we're really looking at Kanga to bring something new. Hmm. By the end of their first half, Wildcard had figured out all of their tricks, counted them very effectively. Wildcard can just sit back and chill out. Kanga banned out that Hibana, so no chance of using that on the hookah bomb site to clear out those cocktail positions. A lot of a roam downstairs. Ethan holding kitchen. Emo Rin in Sunrise Bar. Boat's looking to contest that. Campo taking control of office. And Pat's just around this next corner in security. Surely that's been droned out. Holding the angle from Sun. Pat with the shotgun. Ready and waiting. Is he going to peek this? If he does, I'm going to probably back Pat to win this one with shotgun. I think Campo may have just heard a bit of noise. Definitely didn't see Pat go into security. Oh, that's bad timing. Somehow Kempo stays alive because he's a bit further back than maybe Pat was expecting. The shotgun, the range of it, backfiring a little bit there. Pat may just look to push in. Never mind, trades are going to come through. Double kill there for wildcard. Diffuser down. They end up winning that exchange. It all started with Pat, and they ended up getting Wayne Man and Kempo. Excellent work from Wildcard. Pat communicated to Ethan that he was under pressure. Ethan rotated to ensure that refrag, and they got it. There's a three versus three after that now, and oh, make that a two versus three for wild card. Two versus two. My goodness, can you go five seconds without trading any of these kills? Nasta Fuser down on the ground. Diesel spotted that out when he shotgun this player through the floor and decides it's maybe a bit risky to try and watch that actively. Spruce gets it back up. Gonna go for this aqua take. But wild card have the two best operators to stall out this kind of push. So much information. Three gas canisters still in the pocket and Plantinol from the Yokais. Plus the ACOG to contest this long range fight. Kanga 
They're the ones who need to clutch this out. The best news for Kanker right now is the fact that they've still got 50 seconds. It's been a rather quick round to get to this point where it's two versus two. A lot of those frags early on in those initial push throughs. But the slow nature of Diesel and Geo is going to work in favor for Wildcard. They get Spruce. They get Boats. They get the round. Wildcard continue their snowballing effect. A 4K for Diesel on the smoke as well. Prolific smoke main he is. The decision from Kanga, instead of going for that plant to push through the smoke, play aggressively, try to catch Wildcard off guard, didn't pay off in the end. But I can respect the decision there. Attempting to... I, mean, I thought process, no doubt, being, well, surely we can't go for this plant with the yokai and the smoke still up. Those gas canisters that were placed in the corner of that room. Yeah. We saw Diesel throw just at the end. It actually cuts all the way through and takes out any player playing on the other side of the bomb. But, yeah, I mean, Kanga, need to see something. Lion as well. I think this might be the first time... That we might have seen Lion. I might be wrong. This piece in the six masters. Only I've it's not the first time. It. If it's not the first time, it's certainly one of the very few times. Spruce is just pulling everything from the playbook here. Kitchen's next Blame up for wild card. Making it difficult to plant inside of kitchen there with those holes. A bit of extension upstairs. Oh, here's not something we see every day. A shield placed inside of theater. Looks like Wildcard's going to hold on quite strongly to this position. ADSs and Wamai well, magnets stacked up. I like the thought process here. Wonder if Kanga will try and clear it head on. Capcan actually picked. You mentioned uh, you mentioned the Capcan when Spruce did it. I, I certainly wasn't expecting to see two Capcan picks this game. Mm. Two Capcan picks, the Lion pick. Maybe Kangam with this Lion electing to want to try and play a little bit faster pace here. But when I say that, I mean that last round was already at a pretty fast pace in terms of the engagements that transpired. We saw a lot of frags very early on. They got to the point where it was two versus Bob two with a minute remaining. Bomb That's the first line charge goes off. I think uh, Emo and Pat both got spotted out by that one. So Kanga should be aware that there are people roaming on the second floor. So far, Kanga not shaping up for this top floor presence. And that's why Imarin's going to rotate over to the west side. All of Kanga filing in through Sunrise, Blue Bar office. It's very difficult to get a plan off here. Really ambitious attempt here for Kanga. There are so many ways for Wildcard to deny it. And they've still got two more charges as well for Spruce. As they can then push on to the bomb site. See how far back Geo is. Emo, Pat, Wildcard playing really far off this A site. So that means Wayman can get straight in, get this plant down. They are going to lose Leb for this, but the plant will get stuck. Kanga, now force a 45 second timer here. Wayman's going to be injured and then subsequently finished off by Ethan. But there was at least a trade. Spruce was getting Diesel. The wall bank's not going to work. He's got one right behind him though. Flank from Geo here as well. Emo flooding in and Wildcard in this numbers advantage. Peeking from the window though, it's Boats with the pistol forced to push in though. While Ethan was on the defuse and Geo finishes it off as well. A triple kill for the Capcan, nice stuff. And that's an easy defuse with enough time remaining for Wildcard to take another defense. It's unfortunate for Spruce too. Fortunately, as soon as he used the ability, he didn't realize the Geo was right behind him. And it can give you that false sense of security at times too, especially during those hectic moments where you're expecting people to be moving around and running around. And he's like, okay, I see two people in front of me, but then the last guy's behind him. 
mm. maybe expecting to have been standing still. Either way, match point, 7-2, looking on the cards, as I unfortunately predicted at the half. Yeah, well, Kanga haven't won a round since their blue bar defense in round three. It's just been all wild card, five rounds in a row. You see the idea from Kanga trying to get away with cheeky plants. All of the times that wildcard plants on their attacking half, they won those rounds, converted them into victories, but wildcard here, able to get that defuse off and win that post plant, that retake scenario. Not something that Kanga were capable of. I expect that this line pick an attempt to try to slow down these wildcard rotations and four situations like that plant for Kanga. But the problem was, even after that plant went down, wildcard won so many gunfights just afterwards that Kanga weren't able to set up good go. post-plant positions. You kind of get the idea, obviously, what Spruce is trying to do with the line. We saw it as soon as he... Pops it, Wayman sprints in as fast as he can to go for that plant. And I do like to see Kanga going for those early plants. I mean, we saw Wildcard were able to get a lot of early plants as well on their attacking mm -hmm. side. About a minute and a half usually was the time that they were getting them down. Usually in service, but... I think Kanga are looking to try to do the same, but just... Haven't quite been able to execute it probably the way they would like. Ended up losing too many players as they were pushing in. Bar's defense for wildcard, two players upstairs. A similar strategy to what we saw from Kanga. A couple of operators sh shuffled around, however. Geo is on duty to defend kitchen and service. Peeking up into bathroom, trying to get an idea of whether there's any players in lobby, but Kanga looking to push this top floor east over. Same kind of attack we saw from wildcard. Ooh, very dangerous position for Spruce to get himself into. Pops that lion charge. Just gonna rush on inside, but he doesn't spot the player to his left. He somehow oh. gets the flick. Gets traded out. Pat, is he good for another? No, there's another trade and Wayne jumps into it. What is this game? Three on three now. Double trade off. Spruce with the flick. If he had got the second one, it would have been insane. A minute and a half remaining. Kanga at least gets some position as well. Above. The bomb sites. We're gonna go down the floor though, obviously, if they're gonna be able to get this diffuser down. A lot of time still remaining. But that's what you love to see from Spruce. That's probably what you expect to see from Spruce, that sort of play style. Unfortunately, just not able to capitalize and get the round win from it or even a, an advantage. The fact that it's 3 3 after that exchange. Both teams come out even. One minute remaining, match point wild card. It's time to head down the hatch lab. It's time to make a play here. Kanga needs someone to stand up. It's not Spruce. He's out of action. Leb has been on fire this game so far. Campo really struggled to get into this one. One and seven. Good gun. Good utility here for Campo. Really going to be looking at Kanga to salvage this one. Campo coming in for the flank up through the kitchen hallway. Wayne man pushing in. Campo's taken out. It's really Leb we need to see here. Positive KD, 8 and 6 at the moment, but he's taken oh. out all on Wayne Ethan. Man, and that's the end of it. Ethan will close it out. A 7 2 for Wildcard. Oh, Ethan, you just had to do it to him like that towards the end. You couldn't give them nothing. Campo, unfortunately, the flank goes down super early in that, and then I mean, it's the last two have to try and funnel through. Wildcard take. Coastline 7-2. They take the series 2-0. And at the end of the day, Dev, no surprises really with how any of this played out. Yeah, I guess it was just the script went as far as it did. Wild card for the 2-0. Only dropped two rounds in the whole series. Really rough time. If you're, if you're Kanga right now, after that, you just want to get your head into a different space, into a happier space, because... That was a particularly tough one in the middle of a really tough season for Kanga. Yeah, and obviously theme park a bit tougher there. The 7-0, whether or not that plays much on their mindset than going into Coastline, which I don't think so because they kind of started actually not that bad on Coastline. That really wasn't awful from them. They tried a few things. The runouts were working. 
on their defensive side and then attacking wise you know we saw some interesting picks with the lion for example spruce was really just picking everything uh, at will tonight but nothing was able to stick no surprise wildcard is a top team and in the end kango were always going to be in a difficult position to take much from the series this does give us some uh, validation for wildcard though because like i was saying earlier tonight pro league Six Invitational didn't work out so great for Wildcard. They had their worst performance this Pro League season. It's just passed on season 11. But they've had forever. Came fourth place. Six Invitational failed to win a map. Made these roster changes. Time to prove it with their new players, Pat and Geo. And they certainly have so far in the Six Masters. Only losing one map so far. And holding their own 7072 against Kanga. Sitting at the top of the standings. I think Wildcard are going to be very happy at the moment. I don't think they could be anything but happy at this. They've only dropped the one map. That was to LFO last week. So, as you said, very happy. And, and as I said in our pregame, you know, we are now past the halfway mark. We had the halfway mark starting tonight. They are very much likely to finish in the top four, barring some sort of collapse in the back half of the season that we wouldn't be expecting. That would be a bit of a shock if it does happen. So that bodes well for Wildcard for this season of Six Masters. Very much so. They're going to have to worry about teams like Elevate, Akami, maybe Sinister, maybe LFO even, nipping at their heels. But at the moment, with the lead that Wildcard have given themselves, six points, I believe, above their next competition of Elevate, they're, they're going to be comfortable. And on the flip side, Kanga, it's quite a stretch to catch up to. I think Ferox next in line. There's a lot of maps you've got to win, Kanga, from here on out. That said, they've had some tough games thus far but it's it's not gonna get a lot easier here on out from kanga yeah they've played tbd they played elevate they've played knights but they've got some big games coming up yeah look it's not going to be easy for kanga unfortunately the maps and the the teams that they're going to be playing aren't going to get much better than that but we do have silox from wildcard for our first interview tonight Welcome, Silex. Congratulations on the win here for your boys. A very convincing win as well. Hey, how you going? Yeah, it's a good night tonight. Yeah, got to be feeling pretty happy after that one. Mate, still no border. When are we going to finally see border? But at least you brought out Coastline. Uh, what happened there? Because neither you nor Kanga had played it in uh, in two months. So a bit of a dark horse. And you guys came out really strong on that. Can you give us a bit of background insight into that? Um, firstly, sorry, what, what was the map that you just mentioned? Bo a border, you might have heard boring. of it. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, still no border. Um, maybe one day. Um, coastline, coastline still, it's always been in our arsenal. Um, like we'll throw it in if we think we can do well on it. Um, Kanga, I don't know, uh, about them. Haven't seen them play it in a while. Had no VODs to go on it. Um, so yeah, we played our game. Um, they surprised us a bit with uh, some early aggression and yeah, just capitalized on just not making further mistakes. So Alex, I just want to ask, taking it back to, to Theme Park, which well done by the way, first 7-0 uh, from any team this season of Six Masters, but the Ying wasn't banned out. It's something that you guys have banned out almost every single uh, week so far, but yet it also wasn't used. What's, what's with Ying and Theme Park potentially for you guys? Um, well, Ying at the moment is a pretty good operator. Um, we just didn't want to, like in past maps, we didn't want to just like come up against it because it can be like literally quite in your face. Um, tonight, like we just, again, um, I don't think we really needed it to be successful. We only had one attack round. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for, for, I mean, you guys are sitting... At the top of the standings at the moment. Sorry, Xenox. I just want to know, you guys are sitting at the top of the standings at the moment. Um, have you got any fears moving into the rest of the season? You guys have got your new roster. You've been doing well with it. Are you finally feeling like it's a big break? Um, we're slowly like pushing ourselves um, to be better each week. Uh, to say it's our big break uh, might be a bit of... I don't know how you would put it. But we're not like gonna be like, okay, we're in a comfortable spot. We're just gonna keep pushing ourselves to be better and better. I don't think it's um, wise to just sit pretty and say, okay, we're at the top. Let's just like keep it on cruise control. Um, 
but yeah, it'd be nice to maintain um, the top standing, of course, and yeah, just push through for the final part of the season. Thank you very much, Silex. Best of luck next week in your matchup against Akami. Thanks, guys. And I mean, look, first place is always ideal, whether they finish first or second going into the, the finals. At the end of the day, probably doesn't make too much of a difference, but hey, the, their destiny is in their hands. They get to control it from here on out in the second half of the season. That's it, and it is in theory on paper just going to get harder for them from here on out. They've taken on LFO, Ferox, Sinister, and Kanga tonight, but they haven't versed teams like Akami, as you mentioned, up next week, Elevate, as well going to be on the agenda at some point still got knights as well to play so some really strong teams and wildcard when I mean, like Salix was saying can't get complacent uh, especially when you're going up against elevate that elevate wildcard game no doubt going to be one of the best in the season those are the two teams who are really on the cards for that top spot so wildcard just keep doing their thing enjoy tonight it was good while it lasted and then move on and, and keep working at it from there Oh, 100% you enjoyed tonight, but then you're right. Next week, look at Akami, prepare a bit differently. I mean, but they've been flawless. I mean, besides losing that map on Clubhouse to LFO, it's been an amazing season. They've got the job done against all those teams that, well, okay, maybe you're right. They're on the more lower half of the standings. There's still teams you're going to have to deal with. They still, everyone has to play each other. So they're only beating the teams that's in front of them. You can't fault them for that. And as I said, the destiny is going to be in their hands going into these next few weeks where it might just get a bit tougher. Yeah, and on the flip side, it's been a tough road for Kanga so far and a long way to go still. I mean, I just, I think everyone's hoping that we can finally see them turn up. Well, we've got our next interview, E, ready. He's convinced his teammate that he lives on his farm. He is Spruce from Kanga Esports. Hi, boys. Welcome, Spruce. Love the hat. Uh, yeah, cheers, unfortunate. mate. Unfortunate night tonight. How are you guys feeling, I guess, as a team after that? Oh, yeah. Look, you know, it was a bit of a going out with a bang, you know, uh, for old Wanny boy. The, uh, he's he's going to the retirement village. Tip my hat to him. Um, so, new lineup next week. Another 7 0, hopefully. I mean, of the way around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the optimism. Um, Wayne Man, yeah, been a, a great showing so far in his career through challenge league earning his way in pro league so hats the off to OG. Wayne. wish him all the best yep very OG, much an yeah. OG. Wish, wish him the best um look mate what's got to change you guys have had some really tough games so far not just in the results but also you've been versing the creme of the crop here in oceania is it going to get easier from here uh i hope so eh? <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what do you want from me uh uh, uh ferox yeah they're, they're all right you know Played, a, played with him a couple of times. Um, who's after that? LFO, yeah, they're, you know, they're all right teams. They should be a little bit easier than what we've been versing. And hopefully a little roster shakeup can get everyone's balls tingling again, you know? So, you know, working hard. I'll just ask a bit more of a serious question here, Spruce. But what's with the theme park pick tonight? Have you guys been playing it in scrims? Considering the fact that Wildcard have played it twice this season, you guys haven't played it at all. I'm just I'm interested to hear your thoughts there. Uh, you know, I was just trying to get into their heads, you know. So they haven't seen us on the map. They can't counter Stratus, you know. So, no, we had no idea. We just picked it for fun. That was actually the real thing. <laughs> well, hey, it's a nice map. You know, new reskin. You know, give it a bit of exposure for the man who made it, you know. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Look, I'll let you go. I know you've got the uh, you've got the cows to milk, so I won't keep you hanging. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. They're uh, they've been tended to. Don't you worry. <laughs> all righty, thanks, Bruce. <laughs> Look, I mean, I I've obviously I'm still pretty new here, yeah, Dev, but Spruce's character and so uh, Wayne Man as well retiring apparently. Mm. Yeah, sounds like it. Uh, I mean, hats off to Wayne. Grinded his way up here through Challenger League. Played at LAN last year as well at Six Masters. Hats off to him. And Spruce, I mean, there are no words to describe Spruce. He is uh, a jewel that we are fortunate to possess here in the Rainbow Six scene in Oceania. Mm. Without a doubt, we are going to go to a break. When we come back on the other side, it's going to be our next series for the night. Akami versus Sinister.
attackers recovered the box. Defender is approaching a kill zone. Defender exposed. Please hold. 